Welcome back to the NFA Review Channel, everyone. Today, we're gonna to take an in-depth look at the AB Suppressors Little Bird. Now, this suppressor's been a staple with their company for quite some time. Matter of fact, if you guys have been to any of my shooting events, you probably have already heard this in person. And I know at one of them, they gave away like 10 of these to some lucky winners, which was pretty cool. We also just recently reviewed their Raptor 7.62 series rifle suppressor, which is a reflex type. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out after you watch this one. Now, this thing is super light, gonna be the theme of the day. It feels like they sent me an empty box here. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and take a look at what you get. All right, open up the box here. Looks like you get a decal, the little bird, and the takedown tool, which is actually really well thought out. So before we get into what makes it tick, let's go ahead and cover the specifications as usual. So it comes in in a overall length of 6.9 inches, a diameter of 0.86 inches. So pretty thin little suppressor there. Uh, has a weight of 2.8 ounces. And so I don't have a scale on me right now, but the takedown tool feels actually a little heavier than the actual hole suppressor, which is pretty cool. Uh, fully constructed of 7075 T6 aluminum, and it is finished in a matte black Cerakote. Now again, before we open it up here, I wanna cover some more numbers since we're on a number kick right now. Decibel number averages. Now you're probably thinking, because this is a thin suppressor, it doesn't have much girth. They designed it in a way so even because it's thin, there's actually a lot of internal volume and we'll, we'll take a look at that here in a second when I remove the baffles, but they don't use an encapsulating baffle for that reason. So they're actually maximizing the amount of volume that they have available inside the suppressor. So decibel numbers. This thing came in with CCI standard velocity at 103.54 decibels on a Ruger Precision 22 bolt gun. I believe that has an 18 inch barrel, correct me if I'm wrong. And then it came in at 107.8 decibels with a Ruger 2245, again with CCI standard velocity ammo. So very, very quiet. That's pretty much the firing pin snapping the back of the case in quiet. And then you can hear the thud of the projectile on target downrange. So very, very quiet. As far as caliber ratings per their website, 22 and 17 Hornet and a MSRP of 349. Now stay tuned. I'm going to tell you guys what the Patreon discount is towards the end of the studio session here. Now let's go ahead and without further ado, let's take the sucker apart. So I'll show some close-ups here of the takedown tool. Uh, also feels like it is machined out of aluminum. Looks like pressed in stainless steel pins. If you look at it, it has hash marks on it and that is what you're going to use to set the depth of each baffle. And what I mean by that is to take it apart, put that takedown pins on the front cap here and remove it. And then you do the same thing with the baffles. So as you see here, the hole inside of the suppressor is threaded because Anytime you're doing a non-encapsulated baffle type, meaning when you shoot it, the lead and, and, and the carbon you know, will stick to the sidewalls, you have to come up with a design that enables you to remove the stack without much effort, which is exactly what they did. So those of you out there that are machinists know exactly how this is working, but I'll go ahead and explain it to you guys. They basically set up the outer diameter of each baffle like a tap. So you're in essence, cutting the baffles way out through all the crud because the inside of the suppressor tube is threaded. So you're basically running a tap through here every time and it's cutting that crud away, which is actually pretty cool. Again, I'll, I'll film some close-ups here so you guys can see what I am seeing here up close. So it, it does take some time to uh, draw out. I guess if you had a big enough truck, you could just use a freaking drill on this thing. I don't know if that's recommended, but you can see it does have flats on it. So you can use some leverage there. You can use a secondary tool to remove it, of course, if this thing's really in there. But it does take it some time 
to remove all the baffles. You can see it here on threading very slowly. See it? There it goes, getting towards the end here. And I believe there are four baffles because I see four hash marks on the tube of suppressor. So I'm going to go ahead and just fast forward this so I can get this over with. All right, got that last baffle right here at the end. And here she is. Now the tube is completely empty. So now we have four baffles and then we have the front cap and the front cap is actually machined to act like a face of a baffle as well. So very, very light. I mean, these things feel like nothing in your hand. You can't even really feel that anything's there. It feels like a leaf, like a dead leaf. It's crazy light. So. Another cool benefit of the threads in here is it actually increases the surface area on the inside of the tube and that's going to help cool those gases. So I've said before, uh, if you guys don't know much about suppressors, you're just joining us, you're not hardcore NFA buyer yet, take a look at my other video, everything you need to know about suppressors. Anytime you can slow and cool the gases before they leave the muzzle end of the suppressor, the lower the gunshot report's going to be. So pretty cool there. And then, of course, it also enables you guys to tinker around. So if you have some free time on your hands and you want to test around with setting different depths, okay, with the tool, maybe you want to do like three that are close and then a larger chamber and then one that's further away or a huge blast chamber and then three that are closer, sky's the limit. You guys can sit there and tinker with it kind of like the infield rifle company Novus that I reviewed last year. So pretty cool that suppressors like this are coming out that enables the end user to kind of play around and have some fun. Now as far as cleaning, these are uncoated 7075 aluminum, okay? So you're not going to want to put these in an ultrasonic cleaner, but you can do it by hand, use a brush, use some solvent. You can also take a brass brush and run it through the threads of the tube. But with some lubrication, you should be able to put these back in just like a machinist would when he's using a tap to cut some threads. So let's go ahead and make sure we put these in the correct way. Obviously you want the, this cone of the baffle to face a projectile. So we'll go ahead and drop that guy back on there. I'm just gonna back thread it a little bit. Make sure I don't cross thread anything. And then we'll just seat it. And it's as easy as that. So obviously, since that's the first baffle, we're gonna wanna go down to this line on the tool and you know that it's set in the correct place. All right, now while I'm getting this put back together for the range, I wanna mention the Patreon deal. So this retails at $349. If you buy Factory Direct, my patrons on Patreon, my gold members specifically, we put together a package deal for them for a limit of 10 units. So it's gonna be very, very limited edition. Get that lined up just right. And we can put the other one in. 10 units with a salt and pepper shaker set and the suppressor with the NFA review logo engraved on the suppressor, the salt and pepper shakers, a hat and decal kit for 300 bucks. So pretty cool, you're getting a lot of free stuff thrown in and a discount of 50 bucks and a limit of 10 with limited edition serial numbers. So I thought that was pretty nice of them to do. For you guys, if you are watching and you are a gold member, I'll go ahead and launch that group buy on Patreon when I throw this video up. So let's go ahead and get the second one seated. As far as host today, I'm gonna grab a Savage uh, Mark II, I think it is, and like an older bolt gun that I have in there. Last time I went to the range, the extractor was having issues. So if I have issues out there on the range today, I'm just gonna have to manually extract each casing and I'll try to edit it so it's nice and concise and congruent for you guys. So it's not boring to watch. So it might have to get tricky there with editing all the malfunctions on that gun. And of course, we'll bring a Ruger 2245 out there because it's going to look pretty good with this on there. They actually designed the outer diameter of this can to flow well with the Ruger Precision Bolt Gun, the 22 version. Uh, so you really can't tell where the suppressor starts and ends. So pretty cool there. And then of course, if you have one of those older Ruger 2245s with that step down barrel, this blends in seamlessly which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thrown together and we'll go ahead and hit the range.
it works. my knife. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the review so far. This is definitely a little bird with big bird performance. Uh, for such a simplistic design, it definitely performed very, very well. Uh, as far as the report, very quiet. Um, I didn't really notice any change between shots one and 10 on it when we were shooting suppressed. And I did review the downrange footage uh, from the 10 yard microphone setup to the 100 yard. And it sounds pretty cool. It sounds like the Hollywood sound when you hear just the bullet itself flying through the air, which is pretty neat. So suppression, definitely top notch. Anytime you get a 22 can that's under 112 decibels, you're definitely getting a high quality can. 103 on a rifle is not many people can do that, uh, especially again with such a simple design. Um, as far as accuracy, I didn't notice any degradation of accuracy or point of impact shift. Now I didn't sit here and shoot a piece of paper all day to confirm, but I did have a hand-sized red area spray painted on the steel that I was aiming at the entire time and it was just stacking them. I didn't notice any shift at all. It stayed the same. Um, not much else I can say there. Uh, very light. Uh, you see the profile here on this host does not match exactly because this isn't the older Mark II. This is a newer one. The older ones have a nice step down uh, right around here and then you'll see this will just have a seamless look. On the rifle it was seamless though. So stay tuned. We have another review coming on their MELB which is their Mission Enhanced Little Bird which is an integral barrel you can buy with the same technology wrapped in it. And of course if you're one of those lucky 10 patrons on my gold member list on Patreon uh, you guys are probably going to sell these out in about five minutes as soon as it goes live. That's what happened last time with the Raptor uh, group, uh, group buy that we did. So 10 of you are going to be very lucky and get a very high performing can for a very low price. So. Thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. If you didn't, click the dislike button. You know, I'm just here for you guys. I'm out here testing and evaluating these products so you guys can have a better informed decision on what it performs like before you drop your money on it. So again, if you liked it, click that like button, hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more reviews coming. See you next time.